Welcome to the Flip Lifestyle Podcast, where life always comes before work. We're your hosts, Shane and Jocelyn Sam. We're a real family that figured out how to make our entire living online. And now, we help other families do the same. Are you ready to flip your life? All right, let's get started. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Flip Lifestyle Podcast. It is great to be back with you again today. Super excited to help another real member of the Flip Lifestyle community take their online dream to the next level. And I'm really pumped about today's guest, Sarah Kostusiak. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you, Shane. Good. And Glad to be here. I get so nervous when I see names like your last name. <laughs> I, even when I know people, like I can't, I'm, I know I'm just going to butcher it in some way. So I got it right. We practiced. You did. Good job. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Before we get started, uh, I just want to, I want to, I want to give you a shout out, a celebration, and I want to get pumped because you sold your first membership just last I did. week. Yeah, you are pumped up about that. I'm excited about that. And you know what we do on member calls when someone sells their first membership? I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm going to tell Uh-oh. everybody what they do here. We need the official flip. If you're watching on YouTube, the official flip lifestyle celebratory cowbell. We all need more cowbell in our life. I'm sorry <laughs> if I just made you go deaf, but good job on your first member, man. That's Thank you. Good. Yeah. Your message was incredible. And you're like, <laughs> I got it. I did it. And you know what we say? We can find one. We can find 101. All right. So let's, before we go any farther, we'll talk about your membership in a minute. Uh, Sarah, tell everybody about you, where you're from and what is your background and what is this membership uh, that you're doing online? Okay. Um, my name is Sarah Kostusiak. I am a mom to three um, little wild animals here that are um, <laughs> my children. I do have more animals too. They, they um, all used to be human before the pandemic. Then we locked I know, them in a yeah. cage for a year and a half. So they're a little wild. feral these days. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're uh, 9, 11, and 13. So uh, life is is a little crazy. And I, um, I have a master's degree in health and nutrition education. And I am a health coach. I've been a health coach for about five years. I was a teacher in my uh, before children life. And... Um, so now I, what, what did am, you, what did you teach? What did you teach? I taught, I started out my, my degree is in special education for the hearing impaired. So I taught, um, hearing impaired and children, children with hearing impairments and deaf, um, oh. for the first seven years. And then I switched into regular ed so that I could have special needs kids in my classroom and kind of be more inclusive. My, uh, my sister-in-law is a sign language interpreter and I've, all, and that world is fascinating It's because there's just so many people are hearing impaired and we don't think, and you don't think about it cause you're not, you know, right. like if you're not thinking, but like, it's just incredible. Like, like they have this whole ecosystem of uh, yes. she does like the interpreting for like nine one one and stuff, right? Oh wow! Oh, it's just it's just fascinating uh, to see all those people and how many people actually. Yeah, um, I actually stuff. lived at the Indiana School for the Deaf um, for a year in college. Get out of here. Did, is that the one? Do they have a do, do they have a football team? Is that the one um, the football team? Um, yeah, the. Uh, I think Austin does too. Austin has done really well with the where they have drums. They beat yes, the drums. Yes, they got the giant yeah. drum, and that's how they like say. That's say, how they know when to go. They know yeah. when to go, which is amazing to me because like I coached football for ten years, and dude, a kid will flinch if a honeybee flies by him, <laughs> like jump off sides. And I'm like, man, what a week to prepare for that. You got to get this giant drum so yeah. that your guys don't like jump off sides and stuff. Yeah, it was very, it was a very loud. Like I always joke, I I woke up to Belle Biv DeVoe every single morning. <laughs> right, because I got the vibes. That's right. So I just dated myself too, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I, I know. I got the Bell Bib DeVoe <laughs> in the in the MP3 player. I know what you're talking about. Okay, there now you, you know. You know, yo, yeah. yo, slick blow. All right, back to <laughs> I'm gonna get back on my rap game. So, all right, so you go through this, you become a health coach, and that kind of brings you to where we are today. Tell us about the new membership that you just launched and uh, got your first member for. So prior to the pandemic, I could really just tell people, hey, do this, do this, do this. And, you know, here's a program and they come back and they they would have done it. Um, But then during the pandemic, I really noticed that people were struggling a lot um, with my programs, with or with any program, honestly, not just mine, but that they were if I gave you a habit and told you to do this, it was really difficult for them to put it into practice in their lives. Mm. And so what I did was I created a system um, called Habit Masters. And um, that's my new my new um, program. And I give you the structure, 
but then you decide what habits and goals you need to work on. What, what is it possible for you to do? Because not, you know, I can say, oh, hey, I can jump in and I can be gluten-free and dairy-free and sugar-free and exercise every day right now. But that's not easy for everyone to do. And, and yeah. other people need, need smaller steps. And like you know where you want to get, but you don't know the structure to actually put that in place to get there, basically. Yes. And yeah, or yeah. you're trying to do right. If you try to do all those things at once, like you're going to you're going to fail after a couple of weeks, which is what especially, I saw. Especially if you're doing it all alone. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. And that, I, that, that box, of, the box of Oreos stares at you when you're alone. I find that I think, they, I, I, I think they're alive and they're like looking at me all the yeah. time, you know, <laughs> they so totally are. I'm like, I'm not going to eat that. And then they're staring there like, uh, yeah, I, am. <laughs> I need a, like a habit mask. I need to join habit mask. Well, but that, and we think, oh, you know, I just don't have enough willpower to ignore that, uh, those Oreos, but you have some decision fatigue and willpower is a muscle. And so if you've been making all these decisions all day long and those, um, Oreos are staring at you at at eight o'clock at night, you're going to be more likely mm. to eat them. But if you have habits established and you just say, this is just what I do. I, I, you know, I know I'm doing this right now. You're not making all of those decisions throughout the day. Jo Jocelyn has started uh, intermittent fasting in a six hour window. And I'd oh. say uh, she's probably about 12 weeks in and she was like, I'm making this a habit. She's like, I, this is going to be where I, it's just what I do. And there's no way I can break it. And no matter where I am and no matter, like there's no, She's like, this is that. And she's now in this habit and she's like hardcore, doesn't even want to do anything outside the window right. anymore. She's like, this is what I do. It's Once you see that it works, but then if she tried to intermittent fast and change her diet and, and, and exercise, and, and, yeah. right? Like yes, that's so where crazy. people make a mistake is they do too much. Yeah. Do you think that's where, um, like, you, you know, I know they're in the pandemic. We had a lot of people struggling too, like, cause everybody had to learn how to work at home and do all these yes. things. Do you think that was a lack of, um, accountability where they were all alone or it was just they had so much free time they thought they could take on all these challenges and they tried too many things at once um, why do you think people struggled more uh, during that time I think that there was a collective level of stress in the world. Oh, so that, that decision fatigue was just on top of everyone yes. times 10 basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the level of stress that people aren't especially now, you know, we're 15 months into it, we're, we're starting to get a little bit better, but people don't realize the level of stress and what that stress actually did to us. And there's still a lot of fear um, in the world. And so if you're trying to make all these changes, but you're completely stressed out, your, your mindset isn't there and you're not yeah. going to be successful. It's like, it's, like, it's like your house is a mess, but it's also on fire. Yes. And like your attic is on fire and you're like, God, oh, man, I just really got to do these dishes. Yes. You know, something's got to give because the house yes. is burning down and the dishes are getting done. I don't know what's yeah. going to happen, but so you, you have to be kind. All. Right. And you have to be yeah. realistic, kind yeah. to yourself and realistic. Yeah. So the website is called habitmasters.me. Right. Yes. Which is awesome because it's like me, my habits, you know, <laughs> habitmasters.me. And the, and the goal of this is to uh, help people in whatever their goal is. But you have a structured system. Uh, to get that, to build the habits um, within that. Yes, this is we, this is this is fascinating. It reminds me of the, the twelve week year. Well, we have this. <laughs> yeah, have you, I don't tell you. You know what I'm talking about? The twelve week yes. year. Yeah, because yes. like that's the structure. Yes. And it doesn't matter what the business is. Like we we do the twelve week year. Brian Moran, great book. And uh and uh, but it's all about um, uh, it's all it's not about the outcome. It's all about the the tasks and what you're yes. Doing. And that's what you're talking about here. Yes. Just on a personal yeah. Level, yeah. I, I read the twelve week. Uh, year years ago. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this makes so much sense that there is an urgency. If you're just focused on, on a, a three month time span and each week is a year. Cause if you're like, I'm going to lose 20 pounds this year, you get to October and you've gained five. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which right. Is, which is, you know, I, I tell people I've had good days and bad weeks when it comes yeah. to, eating, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's exactly what I would do. I'd be like, I'm losing 90 pounds. Right. And it's like, yeah, I gained six. This is terrible. Yeah. What did and, I do and, wrong? We all fall off, right? Like, and, and being realistic about it is really, really part of it. You pick like three goals. Mm. You, you don't, I, I try to say, okay, let's pick a personal goal, you know, a business goal, maybe, or a career goal, and then a household. Um, but I have a, and a system where we kind of assess what's going, where you are right now, mm. where you want to be, what are those goals you want to have? And those big overarching goals, you know, like, I want to feel better. I want to be healthier. I want to be able to run a marathon. And then we talk about what are the habits that you need to establish. Now, mm -hmm. not everybody wants to run a marathon, but my system works. If you want to run a marathon or if you want to, you know, 
walk. A ma- I walked a marathon once. Well, um, a habit, a habit is still uh, to me, a habit is simply an allocation of your time. So like you're allocating time to develop to ba- you're basically automating a block of time is what you're doing with a habit. So your brain doesn't have to think about it. Your body doesn't have to think about it. Right. So the, the concept of this allocation of time makes sense because that's what a habit is. And, and it then should work. The key now. is to track those habits, right? You need the data. Um, not oh, to that's what your, your workbook's for. Yes. 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 I got gotcha. you. Okay. And I that's see. the identifying, you know, identifying those goals. And then you really on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, you have to be tracking not to catch yourself and not to feel bad, but to be like, mine usually looks like, oh yeah, I've got sleep is going well. And I got all my steps in, but I never hit the water goal. Mm. So you know, okay, what do I need to do? Observationally, basically. Yes. What do I need to do? Oh, I got to, I need to buy a 64 ounce jug and make sure that's empty every day. So there's yeah. no decision, right? It's yeah. just what I do. It's funny too, because it's like, um, even when the habits matter, like I was, I used to, I used to journal at night and it would be good. Cause I, I, but, but I worked it more as a brain dump just to write everything down. I didn't really process anything. And I actually stopped doing that. And I only journal in the morning now because the habit was good, but in the wrong place. I couldn't, I couldn't process the things enough to get them out of my head to sleep better, you know, but now in the morning, it's like, I start my day and I've, 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 I've put everything from the last, the next day away in the morning. Right. So I actually flipped it. I started planning at night. Like, okay, what's tomorrow look like? And uh, I do this weird thing. You're going to laugh at this. So like I have, uh, I'm very visual and Jocelyn laughs at me because I make mind maps more than I actually write paragraphs, you know, (laughs) but I also, at the end of the day on one sheet of paper, I will draw a house and it's our house. And I actually write my to-do list where I'm going to do it. In the oh, house. okay. And then at the bottom, if I have to go somewhere else, I'll draw like my office and I'll be like, I'm going to sit right here. And like that simple mapping habit changed my life. It's like, my brain is like, okay, we know where we're going to be. There's not any saber two tigers there waiting to kill you. You know, there's nothing right. going to happen. <laughs> right. So, so it's like just knowing where I was going to do the task, not just the task. It like changed my life. <laughs> well, and that point about the saber tooth tigers, right? Like if you're that stressed, you cannot focus. You yes. can't learn, you can't think. And so that's where that pandemic level of stress, people well, couldn't stress can't. comes from uncertainty and there was nothing more uncertain than the pandemic. That's for sure. You know? Okay. So we've got a member. Boom. We've got a workbook. Boom. We've got training. Boom. We've got a working, living, breathing, um, membership out there. So you've already overcome a ton of fears and obstacles, but what other fears, obstacles, mindset issues um, are holding you back? Uh, You know, we often find that that's the thing that's actually keeping people from moving forward, uh, whether it's habits or in your online business. Um, are there any of those left right now, or is it just you're just boring straight ahead, ready to build some things? Um, no, I, I'm still kind of battling that. Well, I tried this before. I've been trying online. I had blogs and other memberships. I've had two other memberships, um, and you know, I, I I just I've done it before and it hasn't worked. Why would it work this time? Oh, right. So great, then I. That's a great. Yeah. Comment. Yeah. Um, where do you think that comes from? Just from the scars of the failures? Um, I think so. Yeah. I just, um, I, you know, like, well, I, I tried that. I'm trying to learn from what I did. Oh, I tried that. That didn't work. Like mm-hmm. what? <laughs> yeah. This one clearly has worked though, because you have gotten one member and I, I know that sounds so cliche and maybe when you get one, there is a way to find more right? There has to be, there's that, that person who joined habitmasters.me is not a special snowflake who is uniquely drawn to Sarah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not, that's just not true. Um, but I do get that fear, but I, you know, I, I, I actually find the most successful entrepreneurs are the people that have failed the most. Like before we started our first successful business, I tried like five or six things. I was a miserable failure. Like I, I was so, I failed so much that I remember the night I almost quit. I remember the night that I almost gave up. And, and, I, and I, I've, I've told this story before, but I was laying in bed and I was so depressed, Sarah, because I had tried and tried and tried and nothing worked. And I, I was laying in bed and I was laying flat on my back and my head was barely propped up on the pillow. And the laptop was literally on my chest. And I was so depressed at my miserable failures that I was trying to move the mouse with my chin. 
I couldn't even lift my hand up. <laughs> it was on my jet. I was just like, I can't even see. And like, I remember just seeing like, oh, just like the last time, just like the time before, just like the time before that, um, this website is making no money. It was just absolutely zero. Um, and then what, what, what I, all, I remember thinking I'm going to quit. And, but then, uh, I went, I went back and checked the the data in my Google AdSense account and I hit refresh and instead of a zero, there was 11 cents. And that one proof made me realize I just have to keep going. And if people, you just, the only way to get past this kind of fear is every little success must become the Super Bowl. That was the trick, the mental trick that I, I figured out. One person subscribed to my email list, that's a human being. You know what I'm saying? That's a human being that gave me a piece of their life because they took time to sign up for my email list, right? Yeah. Or six people read my blog today. Oh, gosh, I'll be <laughs> seven tomorrow, you know? And then like that 11 cents, man, can it be $11? Let's see if we can get it to be $11. Um, I, I think this time, you know, because I've seen a couple, I've seen your attempts and I know that, I mean, that there's something feels different a little bit about this one. Does it feel different to you a little bit? You know, it does feel different. I think what it is is I I was trying to be because I'm kind of a jack of all trades, right? Mm -hmm. I've spent so all of the these years learning all of this stuff, and like I just regurgitate it all on people, and like they they get super overwhelmed. Um, I think I was trying to do too much. Where in this one. Um, if I'm just focused on these habits, yeah. what are the habits um, and teaching just the habits? Yes, I can answer your questions about, you know, health and you're certified. Health yeah, you're a health coach with a master's yeah. degree. I mean, of course you can. <laughs> yeah, um, I can't answer all those questions and it will become part of the part of it eventually. But right now, I think I'm just trying to I really have to pull myself back all the time and be like, nope, you're just, you know, let's just look through the lens of habits. Yes. Yes. And just keep it. And that might be, I, you know, I remember your other membership. I remember, I remember you trying to tell everything you ever learned. And that's the biggest mistake people make in the beginning yeah. is they think that I, I that comes from inside though. We all want to prove that we are the expert, right? Or we want to prove that we belong. We want to prove that we're accepted. That's some kind of biology imposter syndrome. And, yeah. Like imposter syndrome, like humans want the group to accept them for how much they can contribute, you know? And we don't realize that, you know, you, you don't have to contribute as much as you think you do. Yeah. You know, you just have to, you're, you're just there to kind of give people, uh, you know, you can, if someone wants to start a fire, all you have to, do, you don't have to collect the wood for them. You don't have to do it. You just have to hand them a match, you know? And uh, I, I, I heard, I love, there's a great story about this uh, uh, monk. I heard this somewhere on a podcast. It said this monk was spent, you know, he was, uh, you know, he, he spent 15 years in a cave meditating and trying to, figure out how he could levitate and walk on water because he wanted to cross this river and he just and he spent all of his time in it and he finally reached this enlightenment place where he could you know he could walk uh, he could run as fast as he could he could make it across the river and it took him 15 years uh, to get there and then his mentor comes through and he tells his mentor he's like I, I've meditated I have 15 years I can finally run across the water and I can get from this side to that side what do you think and the mentor looks at him and goes it only cost a nickel to ride the ferry. It's like, it's, it's like, what are you talking about, man? Like, like, what are you doing? You know, we think, we think we've got to be that. Yeah. And we've got to regurgitate that. And we've got to, and we got to figure it out, become that and tell everybody else the whole process of levitating across the water when I could just point. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, and you would get the same result and it would still say, change people's uh, lives. All right. So tell me about the business. We've got one member. Yes. How are we going to grow it? What's, 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 what do you, what do you, what do you feel like feels good um, about going out and building audience, building people and getting uh, people to engage? Like, how are you going to grow this thing? I have been um, working on writing um, a content plan, right? So making sure that I am posting to my site, um, posting to um, medium and, um, are you, a media, are you a medium contributor? Yes. Oh, yes. oh that's nice. That's awesome. I, I didn't know. I have that's a amazing. couple. I think I, um, well, kind of like you, like the first month I was on medium, I was like, I got one cent and then I got three <laughs> cents the second month. And there you go. There you go. Yesterday I checked every and I was penny's attention. Nine. It's yeah. attention. That's attention. You know, nine cents. Um, so, and then, um, I really do better. I struggle with writing because I can go back and say like, oh gosh, I did that wrong. Or I said it wrong. And I, 
Um, but video, I think is the way for me to go. Yeah, um, I think so too. Sarah. Sarah, I know you from the community and uh, you have a great personality. Like people are listening to this having fun right now. I know they are. And like, I think that your voice will come through more, uh, on video and, uh, and, uh, or audio than writing, you know? I think so too. Cause I, uh, cause I get into it. Right. And then you can see my hands flailing and exactly. Um, <laughs> just um a little i just do a lot better in person to person rather yeah. than in writing so if you, let's let's talk about this first and then we'll go on to like um some other things inside the membership that are happening but like that's really important to not feel like you have to do the other things even though medium is a cool opportunity you know i mean if that's the way you feel and i know that you know i i went all in on podcasting when we first started and i have doubled tripled quadrupled down every year ever since because i like to talk i like random conversations where i get to go down the rabbit hole and and contribute and listen and like we're having right now you right. know i mean there's no prep for this we just showed up and started talking right, right? But this is the way I jam is on. And I, I'm not even a video guy. People laugh because I'm on video a lot. And they, I tell them that and I'm like, you know, I don't really in, I don't love being on video. The only reason I like video is because I can see who I'm talking to. Right. right. But I do feel like you are drawn to the video. You said video. It's not just your voice. It's the it's the animation. It's that it might be good to just set for now at the beginning to say I'm going on YouTube and I'm not going anywhere else. I, OK, if I if I'm going to if I say something cool on a video, I'll put it on medium, right? But like, you don't just plan on <laughs> blogging, you know, because you can share those YouTube videos on your website just as easily with a little description of what it is. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what I had. I've been feeling like YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Um, I wanted to do kind of a weekly show, like a kind of a weekly vlog where I just kind of talk about what's going on or answer questions. And I was going to do, um, what was I going to call it? Oh, the weekly wind down. Mm. Um, Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah for, <laughs> that'd be like the name of the playlist for Habit Masters YouTube channel, basically. <laughs> yeah, and I also like for uh, now. I will say this about YouTube. I know a lot of people that have crushed YouTube. I got friends that all in on YouTube. YouTube is a game, just like every other platform is a game. Okay. Um, we got a kid out here. Uh, he comes out and fishes at my lake. He's got like millions of views on his fishing channel and i'm like one of his home lakes so he comes out here and fishes and stuff and we were talking about this the other day um and he was telling me like man yeah you gotta you gotta do it it's not a podcast you gotta you gotta be in the game you gotta be posting videos like a lot you know what i'm okay. saying yeah so what i would actually tell you is if you want to win at youtube um you've got to do some you've got to think daily at least right okay. monday through friday not daily daily but like that doesn't mean you're producing every day it just means like okay i'm going to maybe do a good video that's the wind down like that's your core flagship day right wednesday wind down or hump day or saturday whatever it is but like you, you do that you need a lot you need something else on the other days whether it's documentary whether it's talking about something randomly like Q&As, like space that out. You, you and, and you can totally record this in one day and edit it, right? And you just reveal them. But but YouTube rewards people that bring people to their platform all the time. That's why influencers on YouTube are probably posting either really big hyper event videos, but they've got other stuff just rolling out all the time. Okay. It could be as easy as having your phone and talking about your habits on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and uploading that real quick. Okay. Um, but if you're going to go down that rabbit hole, be ready because you're going to be a YouTube producer. You need to have a good batching plan. You need to have be organized. And um, that's how you get attention on YouTube. You throw a lot of mud on the wall and you're super consistent. And your people who subscribe go to YouTube every day. When YouTube sees people coming every day, guess what they do for Sarah? They show it to more people every day. Yeah. It, yeah, that's, that's the, that is the win. Um, uh, for YouTube. Now, podcasting is becoming that way a little bit. Um, it's just not to the point where you have to do anything daily yet. You know, um, it's so much more. Need, go ahead. Do you need to do lives or can it be recorded and uploaded? I mean, I know. I mean, uh, I, my buddy Pat Flynn went live every day for a year. Oh, wow. <laughs> he did. He was like nine o'clock Monday through Friday. He went live. I don't think you have to. I think if your videos are good enough and they're SEO researched, the big videos can be your anchor and the little videos keep everybody entertained. Okay. Um, and people are on YouTube to be entertained. They are not there to necessarily learn. They're there to find an answer when they need it. Right. That's but what I use gonna, YouTube for. <laughs> exactly. But when you follow somebody, you want to see, you want to be entertained. You know, yes. um, you, you can educate inside your membership. Okay. So just have a good plan for that and be ready for it. Again, everybody freaks out when you say daily. Daily doesn't mean you're live every day. 
Um, but it's a mixture of, I made a really epic video that, for Monday. I went live on Tuesday. I recorded some stuff and rolled it out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, you know, that's one strategy. I know some people that go all SEO and they make like a $50,000 production video and they go down that rabbit hole, but most of us can't do that. Right. 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 So this is the general feel I'm getting from like my, I got a buddy named Jeff Rose. Um, he's got an amazing, uh, he's got a blog called good financial sense went down YouTube. That's how he did it. Made really, really good videos, dropped a lot of other documentary Q and a type stuff. Pat went live every day and um, did Q and A's and things like that. Um, some people do it just through documenting. Like one thing I think what we're going to do is um, we're about to archive all of our Q and A's and our YouTube channel. We're going to try a different strategy. Um, I'm about to go on the road on tour. So like I'm going to be speaking in like Tampa, Atlanta, Georgia, Dallas, uh, Texas, Houston, Austin, Charlotte, all these places, we're gonna be on the road a lot, right? And like, so I'm gonna be speaking, and we're gonna document a ton of that. Like I'm gonna document on the road, document what I'm doing, like what's the life of a influencer? Behind the scenes. And, yeah, yeah, behind the scenes type stuff. So I think for yours, that would be great. Behind the scenes and Sarah's habits, behind okay. the scenes when Sarah falls off the wagon, right. behind the scene, right? You know, <laughs> oh. like that'd be, that'd, be, that'd be pretty legit. To have the Friday fails. Friday fails. You can totally steal my five fails Friday if you want to. <laughs> and you can talk about all the habit fails you had that week. Um, I stole it from somebody else anyway. So what is it about? So, <laughs> uh, I, I stole it from Tim Ferriss, but his were all like five things he was doing. And I'm like, what about five catastrophes? That'd be, that'd be, I think that would be funnier. And that's, so if anybody's not on my email list, well, people, .com, you'll read from all about my failures in my email. People on Facebook are always like, you're so funny. You need to write a book. And I'm always like, that's no. not real. You need to be in on camera. Right. Forget That's the my book. real life. Yes. My real I know. life is crazy. Yes. And you need to be crazy on this on this so, YouTube thing. You know? I'll just do that like a vlog kind of. Yes. Yes. Okay. I would I would definitely watch your vlog because I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> this yeah. would be crazy. It would be crazy. All right. So let's talk, so we got a content strategy now that we can zero in on and just forget and say no to everything else. Okay. Right? That's cool. Uh, medium, uh, though, if we can take good things and put on. I think medium is a good external thing that you need to keep writing on because. Um, you got to go through a process to even get on that. So, well, I think the videos, right? The videos are articles are, um, yeah. you can and you then explode it out. Yeah. Can, does, does medium let you upload videos? Not I sure. I don't know. I don't know, but you can totally, I, you might even be able to have a ghostwriter turn your videos into articles. Yeah. Be super simple. All right. So talk about inside the membership now. Um, what is your promotional strategy? What do you, th what are we thinking about? Like that you can uh, get people not only to stay in, but, uh, to get in. So everybody's working on their habits, right? They're working through my, my system, my three month system of establishing what your habits are. Um, but then I'm also doing kind of a, a community wide 21 day challenge in order to help people stay together because community, you want to be working. If you're working on eating no sugar, um, which is my August challenge, um, you, you don't want to be doing that on your own. You're not going to be as su successful on your own. And so if you can come in and say like, oh my gosh, I didn't eat that Oreo that was staring at me. Um, and all these other people are going to be like, good job. Where as no, everybody in your house is like, whatever, just eat the Oreo, shut up. Um, it, you're going to be more successful. So there's, this is the community part, right? You have the system, but then you also have the 21 day challenges each month that um, we do together yeah. and are the community piece. Interesting. So, and, and these are hyper specific though. Like these are the ones that are, what you're thinking is like, we would say we're all going to eat no sugar or we're yes. all going, and you could rotate them between like, you know, cause that would be something that everyone could do if they wanted to, you know what yes. I mean? Um, I wonder if Very there's specific. a way to, don't journaling, those, yoga, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, something that's easy for people to, to implement a small habit that everyone could implement. Yeah. It's like the universal things that everybody could do basically. So everybody, so this is inside the members get the challenge. It runs, let's say it runs to the first through the 21st, right? Yes. Um, and then the last seven days of the month, you basically get to promote your next challenge. That's what we're yes. going to do. Right. And we can push this outside of the membership too. Like I would definitely do this. Like, I, there's two ways to do challenges. And we've, we've talked a little bit about this on our coaching calls, but like the, the first way to do a challenge is to do a public challenge. It's totally free. It's really short. It's usually like three to five days. Um, I'm everybody out there. If you're doing your challenges like publicly for too long, it's going to blow up. Right. Um, you have to be the only way to do a, a, a challenge for a long time, like over like a five to 10 day period is if you have a, a major draw like Tony Robbins and uh, Dean Graziosi did a challenge 
uh, back in May of 2000 or 21. And they had every, all these speakers who are usually out on the road speaking and have no time. Tony uh, flew them all down to Florida or wherever he is. And he, and he got them on camera. So he had like, I mean, at one time he had like Serena Williams was coming and like wow. Jenna Kutcher and like you have these huge draws, these names that they can pull in and put them on camera. So unless you've got something like that, you can't sustain a long challenge like that. Just most okay. people can't. Um, so a public challenge would be like, hey, we're going to try to drink eight glasses of water for, you know, uh, everyone's going to try to do eight glasses of water for four straight days. And then like you check in every day, everybody posts their water pictures and stuff. And then like the last day you sell them into more habits, like, Hey, you just started a habit. Um, okay. that's not what this is. This is literally like a part. It's actually a part of the, the product. These yes. challenges are products and you can rotate through them, um, every single month. So publicly any audience that you can create through YouTube, a Facebook group, whatever, like you're just totally pitching these challenges. Like you're just like, Hey, do you want to eat less sugar? Now, let me talk about that real quick. I don't know if that's right for what you're saying. You've got this product that's a super habit forming system. Mm -hmm. You're assuming that everyone wants to stop eating sugar. And you could choose not to join in that, right? You could yeah. do the smoothie a day or you could do the other oh, challenges. So these challenges will be recorded and they will live in the thing. They're right? in the, in the, um, yes. So they're in part of the membership and then you can go back. So each month they will build up and the, yeah. And you can do whatever challenge you want. So how you, would, I, yeah. So you would almost need to promote them individually at first though, because then people will get into them because they want that result builds up the community. And now that one's over here. And there could come a point where you're eventually like, you know, you could have a, oh, you know what I would do uh, quarterly? Um, I would do specific, oh, this is perfect. I would do, I would do uh, specific ones for two months, like a water challenge because everybody has to drink water or a sleep challenge. Like everyone's going to pick their bedtime and you're going to bed, you right. know, or, or we're all going to get up at 6 a.m. no matter what. Okay. That's just kind of, kind of challenge, right? Um, then have a random one every quarter. Like you pick any challenge from the library that lives okay. inside the thing. I think that's the flow that we've been okay. kind of talking about. Cause what the problem is like, if I right now went into the, the community and I said, all right, we're going to have a um, million dollar membership funnel challenge where we're going to build the million dollar membership. Now, for one thing, that's not even inside the community. It's somewhere else, right? You got to, <laughs> you got to buy that separate um, because it's so complex, but like the, uh, not complex, but so um, you got to have your stuff going. You need members before you're right. Gonna, you got to be at a certain level in order be, to yeah, be able you to get, If you don't have 50 members, you're, right, you're probably what, you, well, the first chapter is what you need before 50 members, the little beginning. But here's what would happen. I know 75% of our members mathematically are beginners. It would exclude them. Right. So that's going to be the challenge going forward is making sure that you pick challenges that are so broad that everybody wants to jump in. Like, I think the no sugar one's cool because it's so hot, you know, everybody loves right. keto and stuff like that. Um, water is probably too simple. Like, so there's some baby bears porridge going on right here. We got to, <laughs> we got to get these, we got to get, we got to plan out these challenges and uh, space them out where you can do them randomly, you know? Yeah. And, but I would like, so what, what month are we in? Is it June? It's June. So July is a new quarter. So I would say July, you said August is going to be no sugar. Yes. So I love no sugar challenge because there's no sugar around here. I don't sugarcoat <laughs> anything. Uh, well, I didn't put it in October because that's just dumb, right? Like, yeah. You, you have candy, you know, <laughs> uh, I know people that do crazy stuff. Like you've heard of sober October where people like don't do anything like nicotine, nothing for like a month or whatever. Wow. Like, people do that. Um, so what, what is another challenge you could go ahead and do? Uh, are you going to do one in July or we're close? July enough. is the smoothie a day. Okay. So, so we will have the smoothie and the no sugar. And then, uh, September would be free. Like, all right, which one do you want to go back and do? Okay. Do you want to keep doing the no sugar or want to do the thing? Then November and December, we would need to pick something. Right. And then January would January is perfect. Cause now it's like, I have, I, uh, we're going to teach you the habits to make whatever new year's resolution you want, or we have existing challenges that you can pick from if you need to get started. Right. And you just rotate through these challenges like crazy. Like absolutely. And once I get 12 of them, then I you repeat them. Yeah. Repeat. So we really, that's, that's, I think that's where you need to do next is you need to spend, uh, there's, I love this story. I, I used to tell this when I was a history teacher and I've carried it into my podcast years. Um, somebody asked Abraham Lincoln one time, said, if you had four hours to chop down a tree, 
uh, what would you do? And he said, I'd spend the first three hours sharpening the ax. And, and, and the, the point there is like, if you, if you sit and think deeply about this and you say, okay, I need to create eight challenges because we're only going to, we're going to every third month, we're going to let them have a freebie pick. Um, but we need like challenges that everyone could do. This would be a great discussion for the uh, uh, forums as well, because we could get other people like, what are eight habits you wish you could create? Right. Um, I'm still not sure the smoothie one's right. Cause it's like, almost like well, I got to want it. I don't want to do a smoothie. I don't even want to get a blender out. Like how can we be a little more broad? <laughs> you know, like what about like a meal replacement challenge or a, a fasting? Well, fasting is fasting is definitely high. one and of them. And that's what smoothies is really. You're replacing meals. And it's a meal replacement. It's yes. a meal replacement. So maybe we can talk about that and come up with these. Um, but I would sit down and sharpen your ax. Okay. I would think of what these eight, what are the eight best challenges that the most, not everybody people would do. Um, I think that's what we've got to figure out right now. Well, um, I have six basic habits that I say everyone has to do. Okay. What are they? <laughs> so those are, you have to drink water. Okay, you on. have to get seven to eight hours of sleep. You need to fast at least 12 hours a day. Um, you need to eat clean food. You need to get your steps in. What's the other one? What are, what's clean oh, take food your mean? Supplements. What's clean food mean? Um, clean food. Well, you know, and that would differ for me. I can't, uh, meat seems to cause problems. So clean food means I'm not eating meat. Whereas other people, it just means you're not eating out. You're not eating, you know, or you're not eating lot things that are filled with, um, preservatives, eating whole foods. I have developed an, in, an intolerance for milk. Over oh. the years, like I've started, like, I know milk makes me feel like crap, swells me up and hurts my stomach. I just know it. I know it. I, it never did. I used to drink gallons of milk when I was in my twenties to get big and strong, you know? <laughs> and like, it was my, I, I couldn't afford protein shakes. So I would come home from the gym and drink like half a gallon of milk. Growth hormones. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I had to get all the, yeah, I had to get all the antibiotics from the hogs <laughs> and, the, and the cows, you know? And, uh, but I, I think I wonder if that is not eat clean. I wonder if it's log your food and pay attention to. Well, it. Well, and that's another one. Yeah, logging your food. But which, I wonder if that, but that replaces it and becomes more general. See what I'm doing here? I'm right, like, okay. you can say clean eating, but clean eating means something different to us. I'm excluded. But everyone can log and pay attention to their food. Ah, people you know, don't so want to do it. That's a hard one. They don't. It, but that that's why you got to develop the habit. Yeah, so that's what you're going to. It sounds fix. really easy, but it's it's a very hard one. It's very hard. It is very hard. You have to have tricks. You got to have tricks in your brain and like. Well, and you don't have to. You don't have to use some complicated app either. You can just get a piece of paper and write it down, which yeah. is what my system teaches: is using you know use use the calendar use the tools that you have. You know. All right. So I've them. got. Uh, so we've got um, water. More generally, is stay properly hydrated. Sleep. Um, hours. Eight hours. Yeah, and I, I I I worry about that too. I think you're getting too specific. You got to if you're going to teach habits, uh, like my dad does not sleep seven hours. He never has. He's he literally lives on four hours, and he's the most productive person I've ever met. The that is rare. Awake. So study. It's, I mean, it is, it is. But someone's going to push back. See, I've I, you've created an objection for your people. <laughs> I don't have seven hours. I don't need seven hours. I don't need seven hours. I don't have you know. But well, you can you can say get adequate sleep. Sleep based on your rhythms. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. But you're, gonna, there you're, are, you're, you're turning into a marker. Hold on. We're, you're a curse of knowledge. I'm fighting you curse <laughs> of knowledge right now. You remember the last time you said, I told everybody, I tried to tell everybody everything I know and all the proof that I have for everything. Right. That's not going to, that's not going to make it work. I can okay. tell everybody everything about marketing. I can, but if I do that first, I'm not even going to try. Okay. Right. I got to tell you that I, you know, I got a result from my efforts. Right. I got to, I have, I got to be more general. And if you're going to teach people, this is for everybody out there listening to this podcast. If you try to teach before you get their credit card, you will not get the credit card. Right. Yes. So the language you use must be the language of your audience, not the language of the doctor. It's the, it's the language of the patient. I have a headache, man. I'm not sleeping enough. Now, if you come in and dictate to me, we're all going to sleep seven or eight hours. That's not going to work, right? But if the challenge was whatever you're sleeping now, we're going to get one more hour a night. Oh, I'm I, that could work. I I think 
I think I could adjust my schedule to get an extra hour of sleep and get four instead of three or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like right. that, th- this is what we have to do in a business like this. You have okay. to do that. Okay. All right. Uh, I do like the fasting. The fasting one I think is pretty interesting because fasting 12 hours is pretty easy. It's just it's- don't, don't eat when it's dark. Basically. It's fairly easy, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, because a lot of the fasting protocols go much lower. Much, fast. yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love logging your food and having a way to do it. I think the genius of the paper is good. Uh, steps is another one. That's an uh, yes. Every, uh, I don't. Uh, that one kind of. I don't know. That one can be difficult. Because I, I, I have had people tell me I only get fifteen hundred steps a day. Okay, well, we need to. <laughs> so, like, so what you would say is move up five hundred steps a week. Yes, from that's what it. you're doing it's, now. It's, exactly. It's not. Uh, we're going to the first week of the challenge is just measuring what I get now. Yes. The second week of the challenge is I'm going to add five hundred steps because here's what happens when people do the challenge, they'll develop a habit of just trying to walk a little more. Right. But then they'll say, "Oh, I got two thousand for two weeks in a row." Well, wait a minute there's a course then inside the membership. That's like go from two to, you know, couch to 5k. That's why that app is so popular. Yeah. It, it's marketed perfectly. It's you're on the couch tomorrow. You're going to be off the couch. Right. And that, that that's where the curse of not, you got to be careful saying you need 10,000 steps. No, you need 500 more. Yeah. Okay. Your challenges need to be the, the, uh, the brick that builds the house. That's what the challenges are. If it's bigger than a brick, no one's going to lay the brick. Okay. Okay. And then what was, the and stuff? I've done this. I, I have to remember, you know, like, the guy that was drinking 20 Cokes a day. Okay, let's yes. try 10 now, you know, like. Hey, baby I steps. helped someone start a membership that made $35 million last year. Wow. But guess what? If I came to you and said, I'm going to show you how this $35 million membership works, you would quit Flip Lifestyle, right? <laughs> because that's not the step one. The first step is, can you record your course? Yep. What if you just did that? You don't even have to sell anything. What, could you do that? You did it. Yeah. Right. The next step is, can you just ask someone to join and you did it and you got someone to join. So now yeah. we're building and yours is okay. going to be the same way. All right. What was the seventh one? What was the last one? Uh, take your supplements. Interesting. Okay. So are you going to tell them what supplement to take? I can. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Many I mean, people. That's the number one question I get. Honestly, what supplements is, do I take? Yes. Yeah. So the habit is actually just taking a supplement every just day. Just taking. Yes. Because yeah, so it's basically like go buy a Centrum and let's just for one 21 days, you're going to do it every day. Like I'll tell you the real ones, but let's just do this. You can go right. to the store, go buy a box of Flintstone vitamins and start <laughs> chewing. That's what we're going to start with. They're delicious. It'll be nostalgic and you'll just eat your Flintstone vitamins. That's what we're talking about. Right. You see what I'm Get doing started. here? Though? I don't Baby being, steps. Baby I, I, steps. I, yes. I'm being totally facetious. Yes. Sort of. I'm kind of curious. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I would do a 21 day challenge where we ate Flintstone vitamins. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> but, but like that, this is where you, everyone's got to get their, their, any public facing stuff or any first step stuff uh, is, is only to get the ball moving. We are leaning on a cart that has no horse and we are pushing it on the wheels and it's a little muddy. And that's the first step in every membership, right? Okay. That gives you a, a, a door where not only can the people in your free trial get a result, but the people in your membership can get a result. 80% of them are not going to go down all the way down the rabbit hole. Anyway, they're going to be locked in this barely moving beginning stage for a while, uh, for the first two or three, four months of your membership anyway. So it gives them constantly something to do, but it's also not intimidating for people you're trying to get in. Like if you told me, come do the 10,000 step challenge, I would never do that. If you told me, uh, if you come do this challenge, you're going to walk a thousand more steps a day. That seems totally like, yeah, that's probably just me getting up in my house more and more, you know, okay. and that's, that's what we need to do with this. If, we're, if it's going to be a marketing tool and it's going to get people results, that's what has to happen. It's got to be that simple. Cause that is one of the things I struggle with, right? I tell everything I know, and then I don't have <laughs> what, what is there in the membership? Because I've already told all everything I know. Yeah. It, and it, it, it it's because you're, you, you, you have the background, you have the experience. Yeah. Here's, I, I'll tell you something else from a mindset standpoint though, is um, when you're trying to do that, you should all, I actually take that as a good sign and give yourself confidence that you are an expert. Like when you can't explain an entire process to everybody, you know, like if someone came up to me, I can do this because I was, a, I have a history degree, but the electoral college, like most people don't understand it and how we pick the president or why it's really, really a good thing and important that we have that in place, right? Um, most people don't understand it. If I just sat 
and tried to explain that to you and give you everything I know, you're just going to glaze over and walk <laughs> away and probably never vote again. <laughs> right. You know, right. like, you know, uh, but at a high, but most people can just be like, how's that thing work? Uh, the States vote or something. Yeah. And that's why we picked the president. with. Yeah. But it's got a flaw. Sometimes that doesn't match up with the popular vote. Oh, why is that important? I think it's so California doesn't tell everyone what to do. You know, it's like that's that's pretty right. much the, that conversation. If you go beyond that conversation with somebody who doesn't know the electoral college and the uh, well, let me tell you about the uh, papers that they wrote about this electoral <laughs> college and why James <laughs> Madison thought it was, you know, whatever, like you, uh, like you're not going to listen. And we all do that. If you if you know how to play Stairway to Heaven on a guitar and you're like, sit down, kid, and you start rocking. <laughs> they're not going to listen to you to learn how to play guitar. I had a coach one time on my staff. He was a uh, he had my, he had he came out of Miami Dade County, great football player, super ridiculous athlete, played cornerback. He always wanted to like show the kids how good he was at cornerback. And I had to pull him aside one day and go, "Hey, uh, that kid doesn't know how to take three steps backwards, and you're <laughs> you're showing him how to defend an NFL wide receiver." It doesn't make sense. Oh, but no, but this is what they need to do because we're going to play this team eight weeks down the road. And, yeah, he's never going to get there. He's going to check out and he's going to get destroyed. We have to teach the fundamentals. So you are the great football player from Florida. You know, all this stuff. They know nothing. They know absolutely nothing. Your members know nothing and you have to start okay. from nothing. So maybe I think about, okay, this is where I want them to be. I think about the steps and then the challenges are really the first step, not the. Yes. The challenges are the bottom of the bottom. It's the floor. The ladder sits on. It's okay. not even the first run. And that's where people make a mistake is they try to market five feet up the ladder. Right. You, you just can't do that. You cannot. And your members will be overwhelmed by that. Right. Your members will be overwhelmed by that. It's why I don't do webinars past email marketing. Everybody can understand, write seven emails and put it in their autoresponder. Everybody. It can help everybody. But I don't, I don't publicly talk a lot about funnels and stuff. Because okay. um, it's going to go over too many people's heads. You, you can't have a funnel until you have an offer that converts. Right. So you got to figure that out first, always. Okay. Okay. So does that clear up the challenges? Everything good? Yes. Yes. Love it. Well, well, listen, Sarah, this is an awesome conversation. I know a lot of people are going to learn from this. And I think there's probably some people out there who might want to start some habits. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, so uh, tell everybody again, tell them the URL, tell them anywhere uh, they can reach out to you online. Because I think that uh, I think I think habitmasters.me is going to be a really cool thing. <laughs> and, and I'm a little biased because me and you've been jamming on it in the community for a while. <laughs> right. But uh, I really do love it. I love the name. I love everything about it. I love your personality. And it's going to be uh, a really fun way to pick up habits. So, uh, uh, tell everybody where they can go. Yes. So I have um, habitmasters.me is my course. Um, Between Coffee and Wine is my new coaching platform um, because I love the quote, life is what happens between coffee and wine. And we're all just kind of barely surviving as moms and, you know, <laughs> yes. in this crazy world. And so I want to teach people to go from surviving to thriving by using these systems and taking those baby steps that are needed. And you have a Facebook group called Habit Masters. Yes. yes. Sorry, between coffee and wine net. And then I have a Habit Masters Facebook group. Yes. Awesome. That's good stuff. Awesome. Check that out. And uh, thank you so much for being transparent and uh, helping everybody learn a little bit about online business today, Sarah. Thank you. Hopefully I'm back with a hundred members. I love it. All right, guys, that wraps up my interview with Sarah. Man, what a great, great story of perseverance. Tried and failed a few times. Finally launched something out there. Got her first member and now she's fired up uh, to grow her membership. And um, even though we just wrapped up that part of the interview, Sarah and I kept talking off air and we had an amazing discussion about uh, her having uh, too many domain names uh, too many ideas and just how to actually build a brand. You know, our brand is flipped lifestyle. That's what we've been building uh, for the past 10 years. And man, we have just like been all in focused on flipped lifestyle. And um, I had a great discussion with Sarah about how not to overextend yourself, how not to create too many things and like the best practices. What does it mean to commit to a brand, go all in on a brand? So uh, I actually, I'm going to play that right now, even though it was a little bit off air. And I want you to hear the whole conversation uncut that we had after the interview ended. Uh, because I think a lot of you out there, 
how many of you guys have bought multiple domains? How many of you guys have two or three Facebook groups? You're trying out some ideas, multiple Twitter accounts. You know, you're doing it. I know you. I see you right through the podcast app. And uh, so I think that a lot of you will get massive value out of this conversation. I was there after the, after uh, the interview ended. So uh, I'm going to play that right now. And then I'll be back with you uh, with a, uh, to wrap up the show. The between coffee and wine, why are we not killing that and going all in on having, why can't you just make that a part of habit masters? Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I running two websites is not good. Okay. It, it's just not like, you know, like I can barely do it. And one of them, Shane Sam's.com <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I have a team of like five people and I can barely do anything outside of flip lifestyle. I get the gimmick of between coffee and wine. I really do. You know? Um, but I think that becomes like, we say, flip your life. It's the tagline, right? You know, like, 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 uh, uh, you know, like how you could, you could somehow like becoming a habit master, you know, it, it's like your, it's like your, uh, what's it called? It's like your statement of belief. Like, you know, we believe that life happens between coffee and wine. We believe the only way to thrive between coffee. And then you explain what that is. Then you say, we believe that the only way to thrive between coffee and wine um, is to have great habits because that's okay. what's going to free you uh, to live your life and stop surviving and start thriving. Yeah. So like the, it, that's it the, the between that. coffee and wine is the target audience. I get it. I totally get it. I totally get it. And that's, that, that's the flavor of it, but I do, I, but you can't thrive. We want you, so you, you have to explain that. Like I have to explain what flipped lifestyle means. Nobody knows when those, it's just a curiosity hook. And it's like, yeah, it means that we live opposite the world. Everybody else goes to work first, work gets on the calendar first and your family and your life comes second. But no, we're going to flip that upside down. We're going to live a flip lifestyle where we wake up. Like I woke up this morning and I watched Loki with my kid because it came out today on Disney Plus. That was what I put on the calendar first this morning. Me and my son love Marvel movies. It's a thing that we've been doing together now for about six months. And when it came out, he was so excited. I woke him up at eight o'clock this morning and we watched it. So I flipped the lifestyle. I right. my family first. I went and got Anna Job. I try to eat breakfast with my kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like I have to explain that and why that's important to us. And then I have to explain that. Then, then when I say flip your life, it makes more sense, right? Because you need, now, it's, now it's me passing that torch over to you. You have to flip your life. So yours is the same thing. It's like, hey, you know, we, I believe I'm Sarah. I run habitmasters.me and I believe that life happens between coffee and wine. You know, all the stuff from morning till dark that moms and busy moms are dealing with. That's when life happens. But the problem is we all just survive between coffee and wine. Now, I have figured out the secret to thriving between coffee and wine, right? Where maybe you might need a little less of the wine at yeah, the end okay. of the day. And that's because I became a habit master. I mastered my habits that allowed me to manage these stresses and these things and these done. Whoa. And then it's like habit master. So now ha it's, it's the context where habit masters exist. Just like flip your life is the context where flip lifestyle exists. But like that's, that's what you have to, you can't manage this as two different things. It's going to be confusing. Nobody's going to know where to go. All in habit masters or go to teespring.com and order a shirt that you can wear every day you wake up okay. and look in the mirror and go habit masters, habit masters. Only thing that matters is habit. everything else is a playlist or a quote in habit masters okay. and go all in on it and you'll be better off. Okay. Yeah. Cause I kind of had it backwards. I think you had it backwards. Yes, exactly. Yeah. A, a tagline is not a brand. A brand is a brand and a brand gets to create multiple taglines. Coffee and wine is just a throwaway tagline. We well, okay. like we used to, our brand was almost pushed the domino. <laughs> which was the dumbest thing ever. We actually had the domain name because we were like, yeah, man, you can't do anything till you push the first domino and then all the dominoes fall down. And like, and we just looked at each other and we're like, that's stupid. Nobody's brand. Like <laughs> it's not called drink the soft drink. It's called right. Coke, right? Yeah. It's got Pepsi. So yeah. Habit masters is too powerful. Not to, you should just wake up, breathe, get a tattoo, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like everything. Have it matters. Have it. Okay. All right, guys, that actually wraps up my conversation with Sarah. <laughs> what a great conversation. Make sure you check her out over at habitmasters.me uh, and, uh, and take those things that we learned today and apply them to your online business stream as well. We have all the resources that you need to start, build, and get your first member in your membership site. All you need is 100 people to pay you $50 a month to make $60,000 a year or 200 to make 120. It's all possible with the membership model on the internet. You can find out how to get all of our training, how to access our community over at flippedlifestyle.com. That's F-L-I-P-P, 
edlifestyle.com. Check that out. We'd love to have you in our community so we can help you just like we're helping Sarah. You'll also have an opportunity there to join my email list. I send emails all week to our members and our email subscribers. We give our best tips and strategies and tactics in our email list. And you'll also get my world famous five fails Friday email. Every other Friday, I send out an email talking about all of my mistakes, catastrophes, and disasters in parents, in marriage, in business and in life. I share my stumbles so maybe you can avoid some of those mistakes and get a good laugh along the way. So head over to fliplifestyle.com. Make sure you're on the email list and check out our membership today. All right, guys, we're about out of time today. But before I go, I love to leave you guys with a verse from the Bible. My wife, Jocelyn, and I get a lot of our inspiration in business and life from the Bible. And we love to share the amazing nuggets of wisdom that we find with you here on the podcast. Today's Bible verse is actually about habits and changing your habits. Romans 12 verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. There are so many things in this world that can form us, guys, that influence the way we eat, that influence the words that we say, those bad habits that creep in, the eating the Oreos late at night, or maybe sitting at your desk all day because that's what it requires of work. But through our habits, through our decisions, through deeply thinking about what we're going to do next, we can renew our mind and be transformed in every single area of our life. So that's what I want to encourage you today. Be transformed. Renew your mind. Change your habits. Pursue your online dream and do whatever you can to change your family's future forever. I'll be back with you again next time to help you keep taking those next steps. Until then, get out there, take action, and do whatever it takes to flip your life. We'll see you then.